Hello and welcome back to Functional Analysis. And as always, many, many thanks to all the nice people that support me and the channel on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 21, we will talk about isomorphisms. In particular, we will talk about what it means when we say that two spaces are isomorphic. Before we do that, let's first discuss what a homomorphism is. A so-called homomorphism is indeed a general concept in mathematics as a whole because it just says that a given mathematical structure is preserved. Therefore, often it's just a map together with some additional properties that preserve the structure we are interested in. With this in mind, you really should remember talking about a homomorphism only makes sense when you know the corresponding structure. Now, let's look at some examples and then you will see why this is such a general concept. For the first example, let x and y be two vector spaces and f be a map between them. Now the structure we want to conserve here is of course the vector space structure, the linear structure. This linear structure is not so complicated, we just have the addition and the scalar multiplication. Now each vector x in x is mapped by f to a new vector f of x. So conserving the scalar multiplication means if we consider a new vector x tilde, which is just a scaled x, then this new vector is also mapped to the same line as f of x. And of course it should have the same scaling factor. Putting this idea into formulas then gives us f of lambda x is the same as lambda times f of x. Please note on the left hand side we have the scalar multiplication in x and on the right hand side we have the scalar multiplication in y. Hence, this preserving nature also includes some translating from left to right. Now in the same way as here, we also want to preserve the vector addition. Hence, it looks similar for two vectors x and x prime. We can first add them and then map, or first map and then add them. Of course, I don't tell you something new when I say we call these two properties together linear. Therefore, now you know, homomorphisms for vector spaces are just the linear maps. With this standard example in mind, let's go to the next one. Here x and y should be two metric spaces. Please recall, in the first example, there was no metric, no norm for the vector space. There was just the algebraic structure which was preserved. Therefore the question here would be now for a map f from x to y, what do we want to preserve? For this, let's use some pictures again. Now, the only thing we can actually do in a metric space is measuring the distance between two points. Then after mapping the two points to the right hand side, we can measure the distance there. Hence our structure is this distance given by the two metrics here. Therefore the question is what is the correct relation between these two numbers here? One possibility you could choose is saying the distance should be the same. So the distance you measure on the left between any two points is the same as on the right. This would mean that we preserve all the information we have in the metric space x on the left hand side. We don't lose any information by using the map f. Of course you could do this in this way, but you see it's a very strong assumption and not really what we want. For example, looking back to the linear maps, you know you can lose information by a linear map. Because the vector space y could be very small, for example the zero space. In other words, the dimension of a vector space is not preserved under a linear map. To get a similar property for the metric spaces, we can say, okay, maybe the distance can get smaller, but not greater. This then guarantees that we always find homomorphisms, no matter how small the metric space y is compared to x. Okay, in summary, maps that fulfill this property star are now homomorphisms for metric spaces. So please keep these examples in mind, and then I can finally tell you what an isomorphism is. You might already guess, an isomorphism is just a special homomorphism. What we want in addition now is that we can also read it from the right hand side to the left hand side. In other words, the map has to be bijective. But then in this case it's only natural to demand that the inverse function from right to left also preserves the structure. This means that the inverse map is also a homomorphism. And with this we have the whole definition of an isomorphism. Please always remember this. Going back to the two examples we had before, we now know what an isomorphism is for vector spaces. 
It's just a bijective linear map, because the inverse of a linear map is always linear. And for the metric spaces, we have a map that is also bijective and it fulfills star, but also needs to fulfill star in the other direction. Which means now we actually have the equality here. Hence having an isomorphism between two metric spaces means everything is preserved, the one way and the other way. This then means that the metric spaces essentially look the same. The only difference we find is the name itself, so we call an element x here, but fx here. But then all the relations we have for the point are the same, right or left. However, the relations are the important thing and not the names. Therefore, if we have an isomorphism between two spaces, then it will not matter which of the two spaces we use. They will just act completely the same in our context. Of course, this is a general concept you might have already known, but we use this a lot in functional analysis. However, please never forget always to check in which context isomorphism is used when you see it. For us, it will be now very important to look at isomorphisms when we have the structure of Banach spaces. For this case, there comes in a lot of confusion because a Banach space is of course also a vector space. So when you say isomorphism, you could just mean a normal vector space isomorphism. In other words, a linear bijective map. However, because we also have the norm, we want to preserve that in the same way as we preserve the metric here. This means that for an isomorphism, we have the equality here as well. Because of this confusion that could come in, a lot of people call such a map here an isometric isomorphism. In the word isometric, we find that the distances stay the same. In other words, the norm equality you find in the first part, an isomorphism now means just a normal vector space isomorphism. However, please keep in mind, this map here preserves the whole structure of the Banach space in both directions. So it's indeed the correct notion for a Banach space isomorphism. But since the Banach space has so much structure, it's also interesting to weaken the whole thing here and only look at maps that preserve some of the structure. So please don't forget this, but for the moment, let's concentrate on these isomorphisms and look at some examples. The first example should be an operator defined on the LP space. I denote the operator with S index R because it's a shift operator that shifts everything to the right. More concretely, it takes a sequence x1, x2 and so on and maps it to a sequence that starts with zero. And then just the rest of the numbers follow. Now obviously this is a linear operator and we can easily calculate the operator norm. By writing down the p-norm of the image, we immediately see it's the same as the p-norm of x itself. The only thing we changed was the zero here, but the zero can't change the norm. So that's very nice because we have already two things for our isomorphism. However, you might already see it, it can't be an isomorphism because it's not bijective. More concretely, it's not surjective because we can't get any other numbers here than a zero. Therefore, this is not an isomorphism. For this reason, let's change the example a little bit such that we get an isomorphism. Now the operator s should be similar, but now I want the integers to be the index set. Of course, everything works the same as in LPN. The only difference is that the vectors we consider here are now functions from z into f. Or in other words, we have sequences that are two-sided that are going into both directions. Now to make it clear which index we consider, I put the corresponding index just below. Okay, the operator should again be a right shift, which means we find here x minus 2, x minus 1 here, x0 here, and x1 here, and so on. Now when you see this, you immediately see it's linear, and it conserves the value of the norm, and it is clearly bijective. Hence, this is what we call an isomorphism, or without confusion, an isometric isomorphism. Of course, these examples are very simple, but they are defined on an infinite dimensional Banach space. And we have even seen an example of a linear map between the same Banach space, which is injective, but not surjective. And this is something that only can happen for an infinite dimensional Banach space. 
Okay, then in the next video, you will see why we needed to introduce these isometric isomorphisms for Banner spaces. Therefore, I hope I see you there and thanks for listening. Bye.